Okay, perfect. I, I, as long as I can mute you, if, if other people come in here, I can mute them and then unmute them. That's, that's all I need. Yeah, so you can have one at a time talk. Yep. But what's up, dog? Yep, yep. What's, uh, what's your problem? I'm listening. Um, well, I actually didn't think of it beforehand. I just wanted to get in a call and talk. But, yeah, if you just want to have uh, a conversation uh, about Melee, I mean, that's fine with me, too. Um, hmm. That's a good question. I've been having, um, as you'd expect, a low level player to have a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. um, but it's hard to prioritize them. Mm -hmm. So, like, um, I have a question. So, when you are improving and you're still improving and you want to get better at a particular matchup, do mm -hmm. you, um, how do you prior prioritize or focus on that matchup? Like, do you just play all the matchups all the time and you just gradually, like, increase your skill uh, amongst all of them gradually? Or do you hyper focus on one? and just put all your effort into that one for a while? That's a good question. Um, so when I was on the come up, I, I'm not like certain that this is like the most efficient way to do it, but it seemed to work for me. I would consider myself pretty well-rounded, and I think most people would think that as well. Like I, I seem to be pretty good at like the mid-tier matchups or like the Ice Climbers matchup as well as the Peach matchup and all those like kind of weird ones. Um, but what I did for a long time is I would read Smashboard's threads about um, like general character discussion about those characters so I could learn what they're trying to prioritize. And then my brain kind of functions in this way that I would start theory crafting about like, okay, well, if they're trying to prioritize these things or if the, they have these like certain options, what should I do to try and beat them? Um, so a lot of it was just like, literally like at bed at night, I would like have my eyes closed. And I would just envision a scenario and like have an idea and then I would go out and test it. Um, it's the, the climate is a little different though right now. You know what I mean? I didn't have 20 XX. I didn't have like mentors or streamers that I could go to talk to or ask questions to. So mm -hmm. I feel like, like I, like I kind of began this whole thing with, it's like, I'm not sure if what I did is really the most efficient thing to do, but I think that understanding what the other character is trying to prioritize is really important. So like, let's say that you're trying to get better against Jigglypuff. It's like, you might have this idea as Falco that it's like, yeah, normally when I play the game, my general game plan is I lock people down with lasers, force an aggressive option. Or I have my other mode where I'm really defensive with lasers and I can full hop around. Like, that's a lot yeah. of the ways that, like, mid-level Falco's brains work. But it's like, mm -hmm. to get to the intri intricacies of the matchup, you have to understand where Puff is strong and where Puff is weak. And I think that understanding it from the per Puff perspective is really important. Um, and just to add on to that, I know I'm kind of rambling, but... I know that we had talked about before um, whether or not it's good to play the other character, and I said I didn't really think so. Um, that's because yeah, that's actually that was my follow up question actually because mm -hmm. I thought about it a little bit more since we talked about it. Yeah, I still don't think that like playing that character necessarily makes it so that you have an idea of what that character's main is like prioritizing. Um, sure. Situational awareness takes like hours and hours and hours to gain, and like what you're likely doing when you're playing those characters is running through the trial and error process being like, okay, that's bad. I'm not going to yeah. do that. Right. But like exactly. what you actually are fighting against, aren't the puffs who are like doing the bad things. And then you're like beating it with like really, really simple stuff. That's like, they've already fleshed that out. They're going to do a high priority option and you need to yeah. know how to work around it. Um, so that's right. kind of my perspective on the whole thing. Does that kind of answer your question? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I had a friend here. Um, he's been playing for like a year or whatever, and mm -hmm. then he got really good really quick. He got the number two in Oregon, like extremely fast. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, he would always tell me that like in friendlies, he thinks it's valuable to get some level of perspective from playing, uh, secondary sometimes, not all the time, sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had always been under the, um, opinion, um, from watching people like Armada talk about it and other people as well that, and just even before I even knew and just like knew how to improve and like my method of learning any game was always that like um, the game takes so many raw hours, right? Like Counter-Strike mm -hmm. or anything else that I played StarCraft, it just takes so many hours. So um, if you're divvying up like your allotted time for practice, I feel like your your progress bar is going to be slower than if you just dumped everything into like, a, like my analogy that I use is for, like in RuneScape, right? If you train mm -hmm. with control, you can train all three of your stats, up, but it'll be really slow. Yeah. I'll say Say your goal is to get 99 strength, training control is probably not the way to go, right? So you're dumping all of your thing into, you know, whatever the attack is, the strength, I feel like uh, will net you the best results to getting. It. So mm -hmm. I kind of use that as like my fan. But I kind of like see what he means by like, it, I think in tournament, I still think you should never use a secondary as like a crutch or something like that. Yeah. Um, because you should be able to be anyone at your local level, even like up to like, I don't know, maybe even top 25 with your, uh, as long as you're playing like a top six character or whatever. 
Right. Um, so I do believe that, but I do think there might be something to the perspective thing. Um, even though you might not be getting like the high end priority stuff and you might be doing some tri low level trial and error and you might not be getting the most out of it, but I think it can provide a little bit. Now I'm more towards the side that I think it can provide a little bit of perspective, but I still don't think it's quite enough to validate doing it a lot. Yeah, my problem um, with that is I feel like there's this kind of old school perspective because when I hear people talk about like, oh, like you want to get better against Sheik, like pick Sheik for like a few matches and see what it's like or whatever. Um, I feel like that's kind of an old school perspective and, and something that I think that a lot of people don't talk about is the access to VODs that we have nowadays. So it's um, it's like you should be able to watch a high level Sheik and see what they're prioritizing. And that's something yes. that people didn't really have access to until like 2014 or 15. Like VODs became like really, really like readily yeah, available. Standard. We have yeah. every single local tournament all across the US and even in Europe, like being recorded, uploaded to YouTube. So it's like, yeah. you could even see what are the, the pal sheiks doing off of down throw and like, how should I like do that escape or whatever? Cause you can watch every single video of like of that. And I just feel like it's more efficient to watch like a half hour video and see what they're actually doing as opposed yeah. to like doing the trial and error yourself. It just feels like it's not as efficient to me. Um, I definitely think that it's a strategy and I'm not saying that you don't learn anything from it. I just don't see it as like that valid of a thing to do. Like, like you said, I don't really see me, myself doing it very often. I don't see myself like really doing it to learn like almost ever. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I do think that people learn in different ways. And uh, this is potentially one of the cases where like some people are maybe more hands-on or they can't just analyze things easily. What I would yeah, suggest sure. to those people maybe is that they get better at analyzing, but obviously that's like, just get better forehead. Um, right. But it's an, it's its own skill that requires its own practice. Right. I think. Exactly. So, um, I don't know. I think that just being able to like analyze VODs and ask questions to like high level people that are playing all these characters is probably more efficient than playing them. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, th I guess that's just kind of my view on that. I definitely think that, um, I really do value watching a lot. Um, it's kind of like in the inner game of Tennis when they talk about like, um, it's been a long time since I read it, but Me too. Um, basically just watching it and then trying to recreate it. Mm -hmm. um, and like just trying to watch and watch and recreate it. I've believed in that for a long time before I even read that. Um, but I, since I read that, it kind of reinforced that idea. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that, w I think, I th believe that you can get more out of watching, like what you said, um, because when you play, you're probably going through the low end trial and error and you're not going to get to see um, probably any of the stuff that you're actually looking for because mm -hmm. um, you can't get there. Like it takes time. The game's really hard enough. So it's interesting that you mentioned the inner game of tennis. I don't know if this was um, actually written in there, but I played tennis when I was in high school. And something that they suggested is that we go to as many pro level tournaments as that we could to go watch. I actually never went to any, um, which I actually feel like hindered my growth pretty poorly. Um, mm -hmm. So it's like um, what was told to us by like multiple tennis coaches is that watching a professional tennis player at a high school level will give you as much of a boost as six hours of practice on your own. Um, so it's like if you go in person and like watch these people move and like how they're hitting the ball and like how they're taking it off the bounce and how they're dealing with different spins and where they're positioning themselves on the court, where their eyes are looking. It's like yeah. you can replicate that sort of thing and also like just take that information and like be like, oh, this like makes sense now. Like when somebody does this, I could do this like, duh. Um, yeah. So that's what I was told. It was like watching a pro level player will help you. Um, like six fold, which I thought was really, really interesting. And like, I can see that like when I analyze or like watch really high level melee, when I was on the come up, I was like, I would just watch mango all the time and be like, that makes so much sense. Like when he does this, like you do that. Um, mm -hmm. and I thought that was really, really cool. Um, there was another part to your kind of question or your comment. And I was going to say something about it, but I kind of forgot, but I do think that that's a, a really cool thing that you, you can watch and learn so much just from doing that. Yeah, definitely. There's one time uh, specifically that I think probably the only time playing another character has helped me because I don't really play other characters. I play pretty much strictly Falco. Mm -hmm. There are even some characters of the cast that I've like literally never played. And um, I used to spot dodge shine a lot uh, mm -hmm. when I first started, and then I played Marth for like like or so, and I would counter every time. And having that happen when I try to spot dodge shine, I think actually <laughs> did help me drop that habit. I don't know how like applicable this is to like habits on a grand scale but like that particular thing i know helped that was only like 15 playing marth or whatever yeah my question to you is did you recognize that your habit of spot dodge shining uh or it was spot dodge shine you had a problem with right 
Uh, yeah. So did you recognize before you even played Mart that your spot dodge shine was like a bad habit that you wanted to break? Um, yes, it was a while ago, but I believe so, yeah. Okay, yeah. Because, like, what would happen in that situation, I think, for someone who's trying to be, like, extra productive or, like, optimal with how to beat this, is, like, you think about, like, oh, God, like, I spot dodge shined again, like, for the fifth time and got, like, pivot grabbed by the Marth. Like, I really got to stop, like, doing the, the wake up shine, right? Like, I feel like that goes through a lot of people's heads. But, like, yeah. a really productive person would say, I have to stop spot dodge shining and instead do blank. Right. Yes, 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 exactly. And it's it's really hard for low and mid-level players to like kind of figure that out because they don't know what the answer is. If you're getting pivot grabbed by Marth on wake up and he's not truly reacting and he's waiting for the spot dodge and then you're shining, but he's out of the range and he grabs you, it's like yeah. you probably have like 25 frames to work with, right? And so yeah. like there's a lot of things that you could do. I would say that like wake up dash back is really, really good. But how many mid-level players are going to be like, instead of wake up shine, what I'm going to do the next time I, I wake up is wake up dash back. And I'm going to mix that in with dash forward down air. And like, mm -hmm. it can just get incredibly complicated. But um, I think thinking about things critically like that is maybe, a, again, even faster or more productive than like playing a character and like spot dodge countering with Marth now and being like, oh yeah, like definitely yeah. don't press spot dodge down B. And then having that kind of like help your Falco out. Because I think um, another big thing about this is that when you think about it critically, you gain the understanding in the, the situation, which I think is really important. I think yeah. like if you're just doing something because like it, it's something different than what you were doing, I, I think that can be like pretty harmful to your play because you'll eventually run into somebody who's able to beat the next thing that you were doing. And now maybe yeah. like wake up spot dodge shine is like good again. And like you haven't recognized that situation because you don't understand like all of the mix ups involved. Um, so uh, again, I just think that like critical thinking and, and all that is incredibly important. Yeah, for sure. Um, that's actually funny you said that because um, that whole spot dodge thing and then going Marth or whatever was at the very, very, very start of like me playing Melee. And I've since then thought about thinking and how to think about the game a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing that I come across uh, amongst myself and my peers is that um, a lot of time when you have a problem, uh, the answer that they go to is um, to not do that thing. Mm -hmm. But what I, an analogy I was given is, is to replace a habit. Um, imagine it like a ball rolling down the hill and there's a bunch of potholes in the hill and the potholes are habits, right? Mm -hmm. um, and instead of trying to fill those potholes, uh, put a new pothole in front of it. That's like your new habit or whatever. Like what you said, instead of saying, don't just dash or don't just spot dot shine, tell yourself what to do instead. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that has really, really helped me. And I try to help other people with that too, because I think um, people are really easy to say, don't do something, but it's harder to give yourself an answer or a solution instead. And I think it's more fundamental to giving you a um, understanding, which at the end of the day, you need to understand why the formula works, not just how to plug it in. Yeah, definitely. I, uh, I I super agree with you. I remember that the other the other thing that I was going to say too is that um, I remember that you said when you play like those other characters, it seems like you might not even be able to like find those answers that you were looking for initially. And like I I really like agree with that because I think um, when you play other characters, since you don't have that situ situational awareness, a lot of time it like there's so much cognitive overload that you can't focus on the things that you wanted to. There's like a Falco on top of you and you're kind of thinking about what to do and you're kind of doing your gut reaction and it gets beaten out and you're like, okay, well, what was I supposed to do? And you're already like in the next combo. And it's like, yeah. there's so much overload that it's like impossible to focus on everything at once and like perfectly control your character and decide what you want to do and like see how the other yeah. Falco works around it. Um, the, the other thing as well is that even if like, let's say you're having a problem with Marth's that take laser dash back, right? Okay. If you play against a Falco and he figures out a way to deal with this take laser dashback, um, I'm not going to be specific because there aren't like too terribly many answers and I, I don't want to make it too specific, but he figures out a way to deal with it, but it's not sure. the most effective way. It's like, you could see that and be like, aha, like, so he's beating it by doing that. But it's like, Draw there lasers. might, there might be something better, right? That you're, right. he's not doing. So it's like, okay, he's dealing it with it, with it in this way. But like, in reality, there's probably something better that you could have done. And again, like it comes down to the understanding of that situation. You should be able to like come up with an answer yourself through like just understanding the game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you have like in order. I think it's crucial to become anywhere successful at this game to be able to give yourself the tools um, to be able to solve your own answers or your own mm -hmm. problems rather. Because like, um, yes, there are a lot more vods these days, um, and that, well, more importantly, yes, there's people you can ask for help these days. Um, but I think you a lot of the time you can 
ask a question to say like you or something um, mm -hmm. and you can take away that thing but you might still not you probably still don't understand exactly why that works mm -hmm. or what your thought process was behind giving the answer in the first place and i think um that i think is really common in general just with advice across any aspect of life if you're given a, a set of advice i find that um, advice usually ages so the better you get at something the more advice given to you maybe a year ago makes a lot more did versus were uh, told it or whatever and like you can understand like on like a very surface level, you'd be like, oh, okay, I get what he's saying. But I think the more, um, cause on a, like on a human level, it's pretty much impossible to translate a one-to-one -one image of what's in your brain to mine. Definitely. So I think advice generally should age pretty well. And I, uh, I think that's cool. And I think that's important to understand going mm -hmm. forward with your advice, not mm -hmm. your advice, but advice that you are giving the person. <laughs> right. Uh, just quickly, somebody in the chat says drug Fox thinks that you don't need to understand why things work to improve. Um, I don't actually know Drug Fox's stance on this, but I would I would agree that I don't think that you need to understand why things work to improve. I, I would say yeah. emphasis on need as well, and yeah, I I also yeah, think that like it depends on like how far you're trying to go with this improvement, and like um, would you like to be able to solve answers for yourself, or are you going to solely rely on other people to like tell you the correct answer, or mm -hmm. are you solely going to focus on punish game and be like all right if I can't figure out neutral then I'm just gonna really grind out this punish so every time i do win i you know i'm getting the results that i need so like there's definitely ways to improve and you don't need to understand those things but i, I think like if we're talking about being effective and optimal i think that like having the tools yourself is is probably the best yeah. thing to do i think he would probably i think that's exactly what he meant drug yeah. box if he did say that because yeah big emphasis on need um but i guarantee that if you talk to him he would he say exactly what you yeah tried. I'd be I'd be pretty surprised because I I am in the Drug Fox Discord and I know that like he's pretty proud of the fact that a lot of his students are able to answer people's questions because they have the tools to understand these things now, but um yeah <laughs> yeah exactly uh, Zeppel says that it was a uh, it was in a conversation about copying Leffen and just getting really good yeah I think that like copying Leffen you can probably get good there are certain characters though too that like can do that easier than others and again like copying Leffen and getting really good has a has a point at which it can't like necessarily work anymore when the meta revolves around to doing a different thing it's like and leffen's not there to hold your hand how are you going to deal with that right it's mm -hmm. it gets real scary and it's like well i'll just wait for the next leffen vod to come out and like at that point you might have already gotten knocked out of like three different tournaments because leffen travels to the u.s like once a month maybe and he yeah, plays yeah, other exactly. games so it's like I, it's really scary to me to not have the tools yourself because relying on other people gets spooky mm -hmm. yeah um wild boo said uh i feel like how people explain things a lot of the time don't help me as much as me figuring out things for myself um yeah and i think that's kind of what i meant by um like take advice with a grain of salt because um if you understand that um, they're not able to translate exactly what they're getting at i think you should strive to understand their advice better going forward and just take it with salt um keep working and uh eventually you will figure it out for yourself but don't use the advice as the sole proprietor of how you get there um, use it as a starting thing. Mm -hmm. I'd agree. All right. Any other concepts you want to go over? Any other problems that you're having with melee? Any uh, anything? What's oh up? man, there's thousands. I know. <laughs> if someone I know. else wants to talk, or I'm down to keep chilling and talking. Uh, it's up to you. Yeah. I mean, I don't really care. How's uh? I mean, just while we're waiting for other people to to respond in the chat, or if anybody does want to join, let me know. Um, you do have to be yeah. in the sub Discord. But um, how have your results been recently? Have you been going to tournaments for like the last month or so? Um, after Genesis, I stopped a little bit, um, because of work. Mm. Um, but, so I haven't played, uh, entered to tournaments too much. I still play about, like, five hours a day or so, uh, on most days. Mm. And, uh, I mean, overall, I think all the matchups are getting better. I find new problems with new matchups, and, uh, old ones get easier, and then new problems arise, and just a big old rinse and repeat cycle. But I think overall, my biggest strive for the game has been to, um, improve neutral, because it's, to me, the most interesting aspect of the game because there's no like you could break down an individual situ situation and tell me what the best risk reward is or whatever um which is extremely handy but mm -hmm. the neutral isn't like to me isn't like something that's extremely straightforward and something that takes a lot of thinking mm -hmm. um and so that part has been really interesting to me because i haven't really got that with any other game i don't feel like and at the start of the game as falco i really enjoyed punish game um, and not so much neutral. And now I'm starting to enjoy neutral a lot more, and I'm starting to enjoy um, 
figuring out how to mix people up on their DI mm-hmm. and trickier ways to get in other than just laser or approaching aerial, like the standard stuff. Right. Um, and trying to be creative with that. And I think that is um, super fun right now. So I'm enjoying where I'm at with the game. I think um, one of the most interesting things about Melee Neutral to me is that um, when I watch other games, for example, StarCraft, I, I've never really played StarCraft myself, so I can't exactly say that this is how it is. But when mm-hmm. you're making macro plays, or at least when I see macro plays, things seem to seem to be like pretty general, right? And then there are mm-hmm. the the micro plays, right, where like somebody's like in a fight, but they're like controlling each little person like really quickly, but then also controlling like their workers to do exactly what they need to like maximize the amount of resources by like five. And it's like mm-hmm. when they're doing those little micro plays, you could tell those are really little micro plays. And when they're doing macro plays, it's like okay, they're moving their entire army to like one side of the map. That's very ar- obviously like a macro play. Yeah, when, sure. when you do anything in melee, it has this weird combination, or at least in melee neutral, it's this weird combination of both micro and macro, like at the same time. It's like, all right, well, yeah. I want to set up laser control. That's like your macro play. But like, I want to set up laser control and you have to think, I want to set it up at this exact spacing so that I can get this exact amount of frame advantage so I can force this type of mix up depending on where like my opponent is and how I can react to this situation. It's like your macro is always like, always tied into this micro play and it's just it's wild yeah exactly yeah it's very very intricate and uh, a lot of times i would say it's just it's not clear cut especially when you're first starting out the game Mm -hmm. um there's just so many different ways i think as a a starting melee player to perceive uh your neutral and how to go about it what are your goals um with Mm -hmm. neutral and what is your goal by moving up a certain position it's just um much more incredibly deep than any of the games I played, and I played like StarCraft, Counter Strike, Legends, like mm-hmm. Osu. I played pretty much every genre mm-hmm. um, at like a decent level, and um, nothing is quite compared to this. And also the aspect, I mean, you cut, you get it with StarCraft, the one on one, but um, adding all that plus um, you versus another person, um, having to deal with like ego and stuff at the start, and like mm-hmm. all these other like weird like personal <laughs> things because like you don't like to lose to someone else especially because like with those games like starcraft you, you don't actually see the other person but uh, mm-hmm. with melee it's one of you on and you're next to the person yeah. um and so there's a lot of like um what's it called there's a lot of like entitlement tilt that i had to deal with a lot because i would be better than someone and then some one time i'd like randomly lose to them and it was the worst feeling yeah <laughs> um so melee i actually i appreciate melee very very much on that level i'm sure like most people do because um i think at the end of the day it makes you a better person if you allow it to um or maybe you're just like the master or something and you don't have those problems to begin with or whatever (laughs) but um for me that's not the case and i quite enjoy the um how it's making me a better person overall um even maybe more so than the gameplay like maybe i don't ever make it to the top 10 in the world right but i think Mm -hmm. at the end of the day it doesn't really matter because i think I think it was very impactful and whatnot. Yeah. I like to think that Melee is like a, it's such a beautiful reflection of like how life is and like you're dealing with problems IRL and it's like you don't realize they're fueled by ego and then like you take a loss in real life on something and it's like, well, how do you improve from this situation? How can you view this in a positive way? And like, if you want to improve in Melee, you have to do very similar things and like managing your ego so that you don't slip up or do something inappropriate or, or something. It gets incredibly difficult. Um, yeah and like both irl just living your life and playing melee are very difficult <laughs> so yeah, it's like yeah, definitely. and everything that you do in your life can be either micro or macro there's a million things um but okay i think we want to get nice fire in thank you uh mike for talking and uh maybe yeah. we'll we'll have you in a little bit later or something i don't know how long i'm gonna be doing this but it it seems fun to do <laughs> yeah for sure i'll be in the chat for the foreseeable feature for today until maybe i go somewhere and play melee but i'll be in here if you want to talk more okay cool thanks mike yeah peace dude peace all right that was a good little talk huh